The situation in Haiti is getting extremely dire to the extent that the United States sent in the Marines to evacuate some of those from the U.S. embassy and provide security. And the reason why this story is so big is that it directly correlates with politics here in the United States. Several years ago, Donald Trump was accused of calling El Salvador and Haiti and other countries ish whole nations. Right? I'm going to refrain from swearing here. And in response, liberals and Democrats bent their spines backwards to defend Haiti. Conan O'Brien flew to a high security resort in Haiti, drank from a coconut and said, it's so beautiful here. Trump is wrong. They ran some campaign called Haiti is great already and asked you to buy T-shirts. Many prominent liberals wore these T-shirts. I'll pull them up in just a little bit. The interesting thing, at the same time, Donald Trump was being accused of saying this. And again, we don't know that he actually did say it was a private meeting. Someone accused him of saying it. He also said El Salvador was uh, also among these very awful places to be. And I find it fascinating because as of today, the breaking news is that cannibal gang leaders, or particularly a cannibal gang leader nicknamed Barbecue, who has been seen on video eating human, is now the most powerful man in Haiti. People are running in fear. There's videos of people being mercilessly beaten. Now, a lot of this is hard to vet. What we do know is that this crisis in Haiti has been ongoing since well before Trump was accused of saying anything bad about it. Now, there's some concerns. Because of this crisis, the United States has let in hundreds of thousands of Haitian refugees and I think it's fair to call them refugees, considering cannibal gang leaders beating and eating people. So, yes, when you're fleeing that country, you're a refugee. And there's an interesting argument to be made for people in Haiti. It may be your your best, uh, your your closest nation. The best chance of survival could be the United States. Now, there are certainly other areas in uh, the Caribbean they could go for sure. We can make that argument. But the bigger issue is that there is no vetting process for the criminal aliens entering the southern border today. And many are concerned that 100,000 plus unvetted individuals from Haiti have crossed the southern border, many of which may be rival gang members and criminals and murderers who are fleeing the corruption and extremism of barbecue, they call him. Now, it's 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 terrifying what's happening there. And I'm a fan of helping people and helping refugees but that doesn't mean we do not have security. We, we forego security. We let anybody enter the United States to the southern border. Got to have a vetting process. And we can only let in those that we can actually sustain and support. And this is freaking people out. Rightly so. The big picture here, my friends, Donald Trump offered you a view of the world. And in this, we got two different outcomes, El Salvador and Haiti. In El Salvador, Nayib Bukele took over. He got elected, became president, and immediately cracked down on the gangs. Today, El Salvador is considered to be one of the safest nations in the Western Hemisphere. So they say, at the very least, they say it is possibly the safest country in Latin America. But this is only six years since Donald Trump said it was an ish hole, allegedly. What happened? Well, especially with the news that Bitcoin has cracked a new record high. Nayib Bukele cracked down on the gangs, began arresting all of these criminals, locking them up. Haiti was defended by the left and Democrats, and they said it was fine. I want you to imagine what this country, the United States, will be in this worldview. Donald Trump says these countries are awful. Make your choice. Those who defended Haiti and those who criticize El Salvador. This is the fascinating thing. While people like Conan O'Brien and Bill Maher bent their spines till they cracked just to hate Donald Trump. You can see what happens in Haiti as videos emerge of a man eating human. Now, the reason why they do that is not because they like to eat people. It's to strike fear into the hearts of others that they want you to know they are so depraved they will eat your corpse. And then you have those in the corporate press here in America who said Naib Bukele was a monster, was an authoritarian, was a despot. And El Salvador is safe, comfortable. Their wealth rising. People are 
re remigrating, leaving the United States to go back to El Salvador. In fact, there are people from the United States who want to be in El Salvador because of the great transformation that Naib has brought to his country, lifting it up in ways many thought not possible. The corporate press would have you live in Haiti. They would have you own nothing and eat the bugs. And that's the Democrat support base. Let's go through the news. You don't need me to prattle. I will show you the facts. Miami Herald reports, U.S. military flies Marines into Haiti embassy, evacuating some staff in overnight airlift. The U.S. military flew in Marines to reinforce its embassy in Haiti and evacuate non-essential personnel as heavily armed gangs continue to challenge the country's tenuous government and turn the country's capital, Port-au-Prince, into a battlefield. The middle of the night operation was conducted by a helicopter by the U.S. military at the request of the State Department for embassy security. The U.S. Southern Command, based in Doral, said in a statement. This airlift of personnel into and out of the embassy is consistent with our standard practice for embassy security augmentation worldwide, and no Haitians were on board the military aircraft. Residents in the capital reported hearing a, an airplane flying overhead before the operation and sounds of a helicopter in the early hours Sunday morning. A National Security Council official told McClatchy that President Joe Biden personally directed the military to carry out the mission. He has been briefed, receives updates from his team, and is deeply concerned with the situation in Haiti. The airlift comes amid ongoing gang attacks in multiple locations around metropolitan Port-au-Prince, including Tabar, probably pronouncing it wrong, where the U.S. embassy is located. Several nearby businesses have been looted and overtaken by armed gangs that today control more than 80 percent of the capital. Since last Thursday, armed groups have led a coordinated attack, demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Ariel Henry and targeting key Haitian government institutions after taking control of several police stations. They targeted the main seaport before orchestrating a mass jailbreak at the two largest prisons. Thousands of inmates were freed by the gangs, including several notorious gang leaders. The gangs have also launched attacks on the international and domestic airports. Heavy gunfire around the airports has led to the suspension of international flights into the country. Henry, who is under pressure by the United States and the Caribbean community to resign, remains outside of the country in Puerto Rico, unable to return. In response to the attacks, Haiti recently imposed a state of emergency and curfew for a month and deployed members of its fledgling, fledgling army to assist the Haiti National Police to help fight against gangs. The U.S. government recently provided the police with additional ammunition. The U.S. Embassy has limited its operations as the violence escalated. Let's talk about what this is. So we understand what's happening. Stories of a gang leader named Barbecue. Videos going viral show him appear, appearing, appearing, sorry, uh, apparently eating, uh, taking bites out of a human leg and fingers and things like that. Now, many news organizations have scrubbed these videos and images and claims. And it appears the reason is, while the video is real, it's an old video. That's what the uh, reporting currently states. It's an old video unrelated to this conflict. But I think in that context, it's important to talk about where we have been for some time. In this post from Reddit one year ago, gang situation reality check, extremely graphic link. This is a post made by uh, made to the r slash Haiti subreddit where people have been reporting for a year now cannibal gangs. They say it's pretty clear in the discussions in the last month that most people don't understand the level of violence, brutality and fear. Again, this is a year ago someone posted this. If you aren't currently in Haiti and decently plugged in, you aren't close enough to it to get a realistic picture of what's happening. The information doesn't make it out and would likely never be presented raw by international media. When I see people say things like, the gangs should overthrow the government to start a revolution, we don't need help, that we should plant food and ask China for help. To me, it's like you're coming from another planet. You don't get it. And you can't, and you can't because you don't know. He says, myself and another person posting, have posted some local stuff before, but we usually self-censor a bit and filter out the worst. I've hesitated for a while about posting this stuff, but I feel it's the only way people will get it. It often comes up, why don't people fight back or rise up fear? They say, bodies are being dismembered and butchered with machetes. Gangsters are eating pieces of flesh off of victims' bodies that were set on fire. Piles of dismembered bodies from the conflict in Artibanit. 
a suspected informant being shot in a trash pile after bleeding out, severed heads being put on altars, a captured police officer's body being mutilated and his head getting bashed in. I've seen some of these videos. It's hard to vet, so I don't know it's true. I can only point, I can only say it this way. This post was made in March of 2023, just shy of a year ago, where individuals have reported much of what we are seeing now. So at the very least, rumors of the of this conflict, it's it's been online for some time. In fact, they say going back to 2017 since the crisis. This is a random sample from the last year. There have been hundreds going back to the first massacres in 2017. I bring you now to NBC News. A report from January 11th, 2018. Trump referred to Haiti and African nations as ishhole countries. President Donald Trump referred to African nations, Haiti and El Salvador, as ishhole during a meeting Thursday and asked why the U.S. can't have more immigrants from Norway. President Donald Trump, of course, is accused of saying this. Trump's comments were first reported by The Washington Post, which at the nation referred to Trump also included El Salvador. The U.N. Human Rights Office said the comments, if confirmed, were shocking and shameful and racist. While Haiti's foreign minister summoned the U.S. Charge d'Affaires, Robin Diallo, for clarification. Two sources briefed in the conversation say that during the portion of the conversation about Haiti, which came at the top of the exchange that led to the Ishole comment, the president questioned why Haitians should be given specific consideration. Why do we need more Haitians? Take them out, he said, according to sources. Someone else in the room responded, because if you do, it will be obvious why. Obvious why? Do you see the game they play? Donald Trump, of course, being concerned about reports that had already existed of cannibal gangs eating people, said, we're going to invite these people into the United States. What about Norway? Those people are there's low crime. Well, I had to break it to you, Trump. Assuming the report is true, there's an obvious reason. Yet <laughs> there's not a whole lot to flee from Norway. Things are pretty good. That's kind of the point Trump is making. But we're not going to bring in refugees from Norway, but migrants, yes. And so he's asking, when it comes to those applying, why are we going to bring in people from countries where they're killing and eating people? Well, here you go, ladies and gentlemen. And Wokeness says, thinking about when Trump called Haiti an ishole and then the propaganda regime pretended it's the best place on earth. These people are abject evil. Here's Bill Maher. Haiti is great already. Conan O'Brien, Haiti is great already. This country was in dire need of reformation. And this is what they do. Instead of saying, look, you know, Trump's right. He's kind of a dick about it, but he's right. They said, nope, Trump's wrong. Haiti's fine. And here we are. Who is that? Susan? I don't know who that is. I'm not going to find. I don't know this lady. Haiti is great already. I know Bill Maher, Conan O'Brien. I might be. Is that? Let me, let me make sure I get the, the name right. Because if I don't get it right. Uh, uh, OK, I think I'm right. Right. Is that Susan Sarandon? Uh, I think I think I'm right. Let me just uh, double check because I don't want to falsely accuse somebody. Uh, uh oh, images are not loading. I think that is OK. Just want to just want to clarify. Don't want to falsely accuse anybody that appears to be Susan Sarandon. And uh, that's what they're saying online. Yep. Just uh, OK. Just wanted to just wanted to clarify Susan Sarandon. Man, absolutely amazing. Conan O'Brien says, show your support for the people of Haiti with a Haiti is great already T-shirt. Each shirt sold benefits uh, these two organizations. Look, I, I have no problem with someone trying to benefit these organizations and help them. The link is gone now, of course. It's gone. I'm just. I'm just so sick of this, man. Trump said allegedly, and this is alleged. They never even confirmed. He said he was accused of saying something like, did, did he really even say this? It sounds like something would say, and I don't know why we should be mad that he said it. Conan O'Brien flew to a high security resort, went swimming and said, look how beautiful Haiti is. The argument they made was, well, we know that Haiti has its problems, but you're not solving them by insulting them. I'm so sick of this. These people who pretend they pretend they lie because they live in this bubble world. Trump also called El Salvador one of these issue countries. Where is El Salvador now? Well, my friends, let me uh, pull up some of these stories from the AP. El Salvador extends anti-gang emergency decree for 24th time. It's now been in effect for two years. This report as of March 9th. 
Am I going to cry about that? That gang members were terrorizing this country and made it awful, have been arrested. Now, I do have concerns. Don't get me wrong. Voice of America said, but Kelly wins in landslide election in El Salvador, drawing worries of authoritarian rule. February 5th, 2024. And NPR, El Salvador's popular but authoritarian president declares election victory. I think we have another one here. Here we go from PBS. Thousands of innocent people jailed in El Salvador's gang crackdown. The double-edged sword. They say El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, was reelected for a second term. He's overseen a vast but brutal crackdown on gangs, transforming the nation from one of the, from one of the deadliest to one of the safest in Latin America. But that peace has come at a cost with thousands of innocent people jailed. Amna Nawaz and producer Teresa visited the country for the report. You tell me. I don't trust the corporate press. These people who come out and told us Haiti was great already. And then they insult Naib Bukele and they say he's an authoritarian and they say that innocent people are being locked up. And I say, you know, maybe, but I don't believe you. I don't I don't I don't believe you. Naib Bukele gets elected in El Salvador, says we are going to clean this country up. We are going to arrest criminals and the Western Democrat media in this country. They I should say Western, but the Democrat media, the liberal media, they come out and they start screaming. He's an authoritarian. Why? It's very strange. They don't want these other countries to get better. So they say he's an authoritarian. He's arresting innocent people. And I say, you told me Haiti was great. You told me that Haiti was great. You, you did a, a Potemkin village tour with a coconut to trick us into thinking Haiti was great. Why? Why? And then when Naib Bukele starts arresting criminal gangs, you say he's arresting innocent people. OK, I don't believe you. I think it's entirely possible innocent people have gotten arrested in El Salvador. Fact. And that is worrying to me. Many people have pointed out, like, it's rough. But now El Salvador is facing remigration. I've personally met people who are from El Salvador. I was playing at, where was I? I was at MGM National Harbor playing poker. And a guy said that he was from El Salvador. I was like, really? He's like, what's it like now? He's like, we're moving back. You're moving back? He's like, my family wants to move back now that it's safe. Now that Naib has cleaned the streets up. These people insult Naib Bukele and they cheered for Haiti. Now, I want you to think about American domestic politics. Which world would you choose? It's an honest question. What we're seeing now is the people who defended Haiti. Well, they, they, they're they the, the, the people they support. Joe Biden, Democrats, they're in control of these cities. They're in, they're, uh, uh, in control of uh, the executive branch, law enforcement. And this is what we're seeing. It's the country they want you to live in. There's an unconfirmed report. A woman recorded a video where she said that she was in she lives in Florida and they arrested her and sent her to Colorado over January 6 charges. We are currently working. Uh, SCNR.com is currently working. The journalist there to vet the story. And I believe it's it's sounding like it, it's likely to be vetted. But, we, we, you know, I want to be careful. I want confirmation. The world we live in is if you open your hair salon during a lockdown, they'll arrest you. If you're a violent criminal, they'll release you. In New York, bail reform, illegal immigration, it's resulted in a spike in massive crime, a problem they created. Democrats created the problem, causing a reaction, which they have the solution to. That's what uh, Alex Jones say all the time. Problem, reaction, solution. I'm not a big fan. I, I, you know, I don't think he made it up. I'm not a big fan of that as the... Uh, as the, 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 the slogan, I guess, I prefer infiltrate, destroy, rebuild. Democrats infiltrate these cities. I, I shouldn't even say Democrats, but through the Democratic Party, these individuals infiltrate. They then destroy everything. And now they are rebuilding it. That's the plan. They get elected. They release the criminals into the street, destroying the city. And now they're bringing the National Guard to rebuild it in their image. It's fascinating, right? The National Guard was deployed in uh, in New York in the subway system because, well, a variety of things. I mean, there's been a, a massive increase in people being pushed onto the tracks, a viral video of a man being pushed onto the tracks and then crushed by a train. I, nuts. And uh, that one's interesting because it may have been that the person who did the shoving was defending himself. We don't know for sure. But still, the fight broke out. A subway uh, conduct train conductor, they stick their heads out of the window to look to see that it's clear when they come to a stop. As he did this, a man slashed his throat. 
one of these conductors. So they said we will be deploying the National Guard, which does very little, to be honest, scares people, I guess. But it's it's martial law. National Guard being deployed into the subways is just the first step. Now what they'll start doing is actually enforcing the law. They will then claim, look, the subways cleaned up. Crime is down. We need more National Guard in the streets of New York. I wonder if their real fear is conflict and chaos that may arise in the coming months, particularly over the election. And so they will use this as justification to deploy National Guard across this country, citing crime in big cities. Because they fear people might actually revolt. The world they're bringing to you is the world of Haiti. The world Trump would bring you to is the world of El Salvador. And the question is, which would you prefer? Serious question. Maybe it's true that Naib uh, has been arresting innocent people. That's that's bad. It really is. Um, it's hard to hard to argue with the results, though. And so the challenge is the individual liberties versus the crime we're seeing. If it were the case that in New York you were able to defend yourself, keeping bare arms, perhaps that'd be a, be an argument for releasing these criminals and erring on the side of liberty. But they don't let you do that either. They give you anarcho tyranny. If you defend yourself, you go to jail. Otherwise, the criminals are released and the crime gets worse. It's crazy to see what's happening in Haiti, my friends. Let me uh, pull up the story from, uh, it, from Google. As of 2022, 731,000 Haitian immigrants reside in the United States, the 15th largest foreign-born population. But that's not 731,000 that were, that were let in, just a large number. And so I want to make sure that's clear so people can understand that context. There are some, some reports coming out that 100 plus thousand in the past couple of years have been allowed in. The total number is, you know, are, are, I, believe it, I believe it is correct to say it is around there. I believe that there really are Haitian refugees, and I believe that we should help refugees. I also think that there are other places Haitians can go before they come to America. Now, for Caribbean islands, it's not the same as flying from Africa to Brazil and making your way up to Mexico. But the point is, so long as there are these criminal gangs, why would we not have border security? Otherwise, we're going to end up like Haiti. And I think there's a track we're on. Man, shout out to El Salvador. Bitcoin broke a new record high. El Salvador is swimming. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.